a.m. It's five past four, I think, or at least in my country. It might be morning in some countries. It might be afternoon in others, evening in others, even maybe midnight. I think some people, it's a hard time to join, actually. But um, welcome to this recap session of the Home River Biowits. Um, of the team, unfortunately, some people couldn't join. So Jens um, has difficulty joining in today, as well as Carlos. And I think even Jürgen doesn't really manage to get today. Carlos is simply out in the field. I think he's just got really limited internet access. And uh, Jens had to do another talk for National Geographic. So busy people all the time, um, which is also what we've been over the last weeks. Uh, but really happy to now come together with all of you to look back to the Home of Our this weekend of um, about a week ago. Um, I'm going to quickly share my screen to show you what we've planned for today. Um, which always is a bit difficult because now I need to chat it down. Go here. Right. Mm. We're getting there. The amazing graphic that we all know by now. Um, the Home River Bioblitz 2022, the recap session with all of you BioBlitz organizers who managed to get a huge amount of people worldwide to their home rivers to explore together. Um, and a big thank you to all of you who really motivated a bigger group, um, who had a day out there, who observed biodiversity, but mostly who had a fun time on the river, I think, um, building a local community that cares about rivers and co connecting to a global community at the same time. Um, so good times and we've uh, we've gotten a lot of good feedback throughout the time so happy to reconnect with all of you um today we'll look at a few highlights a few numbers of the home river biobits then we go to some bird observations um specifically zooming into those because we have Yelena here who is just super motivated to always go through all the bird observations and he's she's gonna have a bit of a recap on that specifically. We unfortunately don't have this on other um, species groups, but this is maybe something that could happen in the next um, weeks or months. So i um, looking forward to, to do something with more of the observations soon. Um, then we have some time to share experiences. I already know a few people that want to present a little of what they've done during their Home River BioBlitz. But anyone that still wants to add into that, there's time to really go through uh, like around the whole world and to see some photos and some highlights of what you've all done during that day. Um, and then we might have still a bit of time for a feedback round and maybe um, a little look out to what still could be done um, and what can be done next year. Um, so as you know, this is the third Home River Biobits started two years ago during the global pandemic to um, to motivate people to go out to their home rivers in a moment that it was really difficult to connect to people um, in other places. So we focus on the, the places that we're actually close by to. And this, um, this grew into this Home River Bioblitz that is now already tradition, I would say. So this year we had the third Home River Bioblitz and over 80 locations worldwide, I think people went out. Um, and that led to more than 13,000 observations, which I think is really quite impressive um, looking at a specific ecosystem and then um, getting so many people out to, to focus on those ecosystems almost 4,000 different species already identified by more than a thousand people. Um, and you see this difference um, in the number of identifiers and observers, which means that it's not only the people that are actually out on that day and are doing the observations, but it's also a lot of people that then look at the observations, which shows the strength of this iNaturalist community. Um, so pretty impressive and um, a lot of bigger bio blitzes, also some smaller ones out there that um, still had a like maybe smaller group, but really had the, the pleasure of um, observing around. Um, and definitely need to mention this Rio Nazas in Mexico who had over 3000 observations. Um, so congratulations, um, but really looking forward to hearing from all of you um, today. Um, 
this map um, is just a screenshot from the iNaturalist project, and it shows a bit how we're basically covering the whole world. And um, I know it is um, pretty, how do you say that, relative, but it's it's really amazing to see um, people from all corners of the world motivated to celebrate our home rivers and to join this activity with us. Um, I took out really just a few observations to show kind of how global this is. So we had some macroinvertebrates um, observed by Brendan in Peru. Um, that was the, um, this light, oh, I cannot see the name because of my, sorry. Um, but this beautiful see-through little small animal now in Miami in the US. Um, beautiful Florida painted lady observed in South Africa. We had a snail eating turtle observed in Thailand. Pretty cool animal here. Um, this tecmomentus, um, beautiful creature in Mexico, and then a super tiny little fish. Cool to see that people really also dove into the rivers um, out in Munich. Um, and as I said, this was just a random grasp of the 3, 000, um, 13,000 observations, um, but super cool to go through them a bit. Um, so to look at really like a bit more of an analysis, we go to Yelena now, who's going to um, take us through the bird observation specifically. Are you there with us, Yelena? Yes, I'm ready. Maybe share this. All right. Okay. Um, so hi, everybody. I, as every year, I try to do this kind of like a re little recap of which birds do we see of today. I usually have a lot of fun with this because there's so many interesting species that you guys observe and they are all very behaviorally interesting as well. And so let's start with this year. This was how my uh, introduction slide actually looked like last year. And this year it just looks a little bit different. Um, again, we had these, uh, spe these four species that are kind of like winners. Even in the 2020, this vermilion flycatcher was the most observed with like almost 40 observations. But these are the constant winners over the three years <laughs> of the bio blitzes. Um, as Vera already showed, this is like a, uh, the great um, snap, snapshot of, this, of the map of how many uh, things are covered and uh, they were not all bird observations there, of course, but it's really impressive how many places actually that the Bible is here. Um, this is like a little comparison slide on species that we had across the years and as well bird species. When the 2020 already, like in the first year, it was like a very good record, but then every other year we have more and more species and like from 2021 to 2022, the number of pre species really increased like for almost 1,000 more species. Um, with the birds, it's, it's always like a similar number across the years. Uh, although the first year in comparison to other species, they were taking a bigger percentage, but I think the last years, a lot of people are actually looking as well as some arachnids that are taking up a lot of more space and we see there's a lot of plant observations as well, but yeah, the numbers are kind of constant, which is nice. Um, this year we had a lot of interesting birds that have different ecologies as well, connected to our rivers. For example, these here, this here is a family of burrowing owls. Um, they, their population is also kind of declining in North America because of the loss of habitat and control programs for the prayer dogs because they have to burrow their own, um, they, uh, prayer, do prayer dogs, they burrow their own burrows that owls then use, but then because there's no available burrows, the owls don't have a place to nest. Then there are these funny guys, they're really tiny. The elk owls, for example, they are really curious because they, when they are handled or when they are handled by the predator, they pretend that they are dead and then their grip releases, like the predator grip releases, and then they just escape. Yeah. Uh, we had some very nice colorful birds as well this year. Each year we have a lot of hummingbirds and 
this is like a selection of hummingbirds and sunbirds this year uh, that we ha had. I really like these olive-backed sunbirds and for example the orange-breasted sunbirds that the males look really impressive here and they all feed, like this whole group here feeds on nectar. Of course the river the main river birds like kingfishers. Uh, before we didn't have the uh, uh, black capped kingfisher and that is a tree kingfisher so it usually perches on the trees in comparison to the others who cannot, the anatomy is really not so good, they cannot be moving so well in the trees but this guy can and they are uh, widely distributed in Asia. Um, again we have some species that are near threatened or vulnerable like this loggerhead shrike. That bird is decreasing in the Americas since the 60s and there are some subspecies that are already critically endangered. This was, I think this year we had two observations from Mexico. These shrikes, they are really gruesome and they catch a prey that is way, way bigger than they are. For example, this year this wall um, and they stab it onto some uh, sharp object or kind of like with their talons try to swing their neck, their twist their neck and that's how they kill them and they eat them. Um, then we have some very interesting birds for me especially. They are these Bilson's phalaropes and usually in the bird world you have males that look more colorful than females and with Bilson's phalaropes it's totally different. This here is a female and this here is a male. So in this case, the females are way uh, more colored and the males are dull. So the females actually compete for male attention and the males are the ones that raise the brood and take care of the eggs alone. Um, they are already imperiled or critically imperiled locally. And what is interesting for them is that they like the salty, the salty water. Um, but I think maybe on migration they could be spotted. And they have a really cool feeding system where they just swirl around in the water. I want to show you that video, if that's possible, here. Do you guys see the video? Or maybe I'm not sharing this one. Yeah, we see. Okay, okay. So this is how they eat. They just put their feet, they like use their feet to swirl around and then the insects and their food just comes to them and then they catch it, which is pretty impressive when there's Many of them just swirling <laughs> like crazy. Yeah. Um, so then we have some also really interesting birds this year that are a brood parasites, such as this brown headed cowbird. They are obligate bird, uh, brood parasites, which means they place that, uh, their egg into the nest of other bird, which the other birds either recognize. So this is how their egg looks like pretty different than the others, but somehow these chicks make it and there is, for example, from this year, I've seen a cowbird baby feeding, uh, feed, fed by Junko and it was the only uh, fledgling left in the nest. So all the other siblings or all the other native chicks, they, they don't make it. Uh, another really exciting uh, cuckoo is this striped cuckoo. Not many, not much is known about this bird. This is how the uh, chick looks like. It's like a pine cone <laughs> and they are also brood parasites and they lay the eggs. So this here, this wren is their host and this is the type of the egg that they lay. So like many other cuckoos, they imitate the color of the eggs of their host bird. And the chicks are actually pretty gruesome because they start killing, when they get out of the egg, they immediately start killing every other chick that is in there or even like take out the eggs from the nest. And then we had another type of parasitism and here's like kleptoparasites. Um, we had the observation of the fregata bird, which uh, was really cool. These birds, they, the males have this like puffed red, um, um, an ornament and this here is a female and uh, they have this thing that how they feed is kleptoparasitism which means that they basically make other birds regurg regurgitate <laughs> sorry uh, the food and then they uh, steal it from their mouths yeah 
So this was like a quick recap of some birds that we had this year and they were all pretty cool. There were so many species again and I chose some that were very interesting to me uh, to just kind of show that whatever we observe in the river, it has like many different uh, life histories and it's very different from each other. And we see that all these inhabitants or the birds that actually use the rivers in some way, they are so much diverse and not only in how they look, but also in how they uh, behave, how they breathe, and they depend on the rivers, which is why we protect them. And of course, they also have a lot of different uh, feeding habits uh, as well. Yeah, so that's it from me, from the birds. And if you have any questions, you can also like ask me now. Cool. Thanks a lot, Yelena. Um, really cool insight into the birds part of the Home River Beoblitz. Some cool observations and cool explanations. Um, is there any questions from anyone in this perspective? I just wanted to say that was great. I'm showing this to my my students. I have a, a class here, and so we're <laughs> we're all watching and and learning about some of these birds. So it's, thank you. That was awesome. Oh, no, that's that's really that's really cool. Yeah, there are many. There were many interesting birds with many interesting habits, and that was very very cool for me to look into. And if you need any more material or something that I can I can send and share. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Amazing to know we've got like triple the audience of that we thought we had here actually looking with us in the class. Um, thanks a lot for that. Hey, this is um, so this was the birds. Obviously, there's a lot more species groups that we haven't mentioned now. And this is at the same time a bit of a call to people. If you're if you have one species group that you're particularly interested in, um, as Yelena said, she really enjoyed going through the observations of the world. And um, so this is a call to anyone that would like to do that for other species and we're definitely thinking of ways to get this a bit more um organized towards next year um cool then it's um now time i'm gonna start screening it again um to share our own experience um because like the, the number of observations already astonishes us quite a bit though. But um, what really overwhelms us is just the amount of enthusiasm that we see coming through this WhatsApp group, that we see coming through um, Instagram, that we see coming through different channels um, to see that so many people really enjoy just going out there, have this fun day out there. Um, and I was out in, um, in the Utstall myself in, the, in Austria and competing with a competition at the same time. So it was like, really impossible for me to keep up with all of that excitement um i almost feel bad for it because i would have wished to really keep up with all the things happening um but therefore we have this moment now um i randomly took a few photos from the whatsapp group to just go through the world again a little bit with some of the photos um starting with this video on the during this experience we call seeing hypings of insects around me struggling for fish among many other species being able to participate in this activity really made use of the importance of our years and how the biodiversity that lives is there <laughs> As you can see, that um, just started faster than I expected, so I couldn't really introduce. But this, it was super cool to see such a small, um, quick video coming together from some students uh, out there in Mexico. Um, obviously, I chose it because it was a short one, so that helped this time. Um, as you know, we are still working on our own video, and I'll talk about that a little later. Um, these are two shots from um, Pereira in Colombia, if I'm correct. Um, beautiful place to be. And then also seeing that some um, amazing photographs are being made. Um, some photos from the Rio Nazas, who, as you know, had those more than 3,000 observations, which was super cool. And a little super nice detail is the t-shirts that they're all wearing. Um, so they've 
for the last few years been printing their own t-shirts with the illustration made by Mauro. Um, I guess that helps to get people motivated. So that's a really cool idea to do. Um, Ilorin River in Nigeria. Um, I think they found a different river than last year because I remember they were like paddling around on the river last year, maybe a different section. Because um, that boat that they had last year, I don't think they would have taken down this little white water section. Um, but clearly a lot of cool observations again. Um, and here a different way of observing from the Meklong River in Thailand. Um, using some traditional fishing nets, going out in the boat, um, being able to access different parts of the river than you would only do by foot. Um, so cool way of um, getting out there as well. Um, two people that already have told me they would like to present a bit are also two people that really um, make their story go further than just um, our WhatsApp group or um, their localities. Um, one of them is Antonio from Peru. Um, and what I love is that he really, um, really combines it as well or relates it to the Great Southern BioBridge, which is another global event um, happening in October, in a few weeks, if I'm correct. Um, and he's written a blog post for them as well. And then um, we'll have Claudia Ortiz from Mexico as well, who's written a blog post or a column for the Letra Fria. So that's two super cool um, outlets of the event already. Um, so I'll start inviting with Antonio and then we go to Claudia. And I know Aum or Andy will have a bit of a presentation on um, their bio blitz. And let me know in the chat if you also would like to present a bit of your bio blitz after this. Um, Antonio, are you with us? Okay, uh, can I share? Yes. Okay, thank you. Well, good day. I am happy to. Okay, I am happy to to show results of the activity in Peru. We had five projects with the participation of nine organizations. Three of these projects were located in the east coast of my country, with the waters moving to the Ocean Pacific. The other two were in the high Andes. My country is crossed by. A, a low, uh, a high uh, range of mountains from north to south, and these two projects were loca located in areas where they moved the water to the Atlantic Ocean, to the Amazonia. That was really very, very interesting. One organization by each project, uh, Red Guardianes de los Humedales, BioEdes, Bio Naturalista Perú, Denver. Su y Pro Fauna Silvestre. They were supported by other four organizations uh, that, that were uh, helping with the distribution of information and promotion of the activity in our, in our country. At the end, after the activities, we had a total of 1,024 observations by the, for the country at the moment, and we have 273 species. We, this number is still increasing because more to 82% of the, of the observations are pending identification. So we need many help with the identification of these records. And we have, partic uh, uh, we have the participation of 51 persons, really the teams were for, with, with that more to 60 persons, but 51 of them were uh, sharing these records on the internet, uh, iNaturalist platform. This is a comparison between the different projects. Uh, we were really surprised that Rio Lurin is uh, Rio Rima and Rio Chillon. These three rivers are located, uh, are crossing the main city of the country, the capital, Lima. And this, these are very important, really, because the Rima is, uh, is the main source of water for human consumption in the city. And the other two rivers, Lurin and Xiong, are very important for crops uh, in the near to the city. So they are really very important for the for the people that live on my, in, in Lima. But not many people know how is the situation. That is why we promote this activity with many interests, because we want to show to show to the people how is the condition of these rivers. They are really they have really big problems 
uh, by different reasons. Other two areas were in Rio Guatatas, Ayacucho, and the High Andes, and La, 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 National, La Reserva Nacional de Junín, National, Junín uh, National Reserve, also in the Andes. This, uh, this shows the number by each project. Uh, it's not the same, same scale for the, in each area, but this show how important was for Lurin the number of records with Lima, they have all, uh, the same number, but in, in Lima, in, in Rio Lima, have really a, a good uh, result in number of species. But as I was telling before, we need uh, still more people helping with identification. This is the totals at the moment in numbers of different groups, plants, insects, uh, birds, spiders, mollusks, uh, mushrooms. Uh, normally in all these activities with uh, people, we obtain always uh, more number for plants. And this is very important to know, to have a, a, a good idea about uh, the, the species that support insects and birds and, and after, uh, this instance, but we have we have been surprised. We have in this record only two, two species of amphibia, but it's very important because we along the last years we have very very few records of amphibians in Lima, and these new records, new localities recorded really are are very good, but very good uh, um, contributions of this uh, project for for the knowledge of the amphibians in the area. And let me show you this were the teams to show you Lurin, uh, the river. This is the, the group was really very motivated, was very happy to participate and very willing to learn. Many people need, need to learn how to find small uh, insects, uh, plants, how to differentiate, how to get a better differentiation of the species uh, to have the record in the, in the field. La Punta is the, 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 the end of the Rio Rima. They, they also have, have a, a very good uh, group of participants, really very motivated also. And they have a, a, go, a good communication in the social networks. Uh, sorry. Uh, well, I was working along in the Canal Surco. Canal Surco is an is a artificial channel uh, from the Rio Rima, and this is very important because this canal, this channel cross all the city and is crossing 17 uh, districts in, in, in the main city. And it's very important for the um, irrigation of the uh, parks in, in, the, in the city. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting because it's, it's how many species of plants are moving along the city uh, from the Rio Rima, Rima River. And in the upper part of the Rima River where this tree, this team of three per people. They also were finding many good uh, observations, uh, especially amphibians. They, they have the more, the more, uh, the, be the big number of records of on, on amphibians. Chillon River also a very highly motivated group, really very enthusiastic, but very happy to participate. And uh, uh, with good records, especially we were surprised because Chillon River was very contaminated. The area, if I show you pictures of the area, really you will be surprised uh, how, how poor is the river in, in condition. But was our surprise, we found, we found a paradise of plants full of flowers, many, many insects, and really that, that the people was very surprised. And now we are very interested to promote more activities in this area. It's really important for us to for, for the knowledge of the people. Uh, Watatas River is in Ayacucho. There were five people working in the area. They are also a good team working uh, from long years ago uh, in, in the area with interest to know more about biodiversity uh, and to promote the area for, for the interest of the country. And in Union Day, we have two people. With the other person don't have a picture, so I can show you really the other picture, but he was uh, uh, one of the participants in the area, um, also contribu with, with contributions for our project, no? Thanks. Amazing, thank you, Antonio.
And to me, it's amazing to see this as a country that hasn't been participating. Only we were last year up in um, up in Utkabamba. But to see suddenly the, the iNaturalist community, because there's quite a community in the country, you know, that suddenly stood up and that said like, oh, let's do this. And then boom, five five places and really big in Lima. So thanks a lot for motivating this this crowd, Antonio. I think that was on you a lot and um, super cool to see that that growing. Um, I asked people to share like two or three photos. It's interpreted as two to three slides with a lot more photos. Very smart. I think more people did this. Um, we have quite some people that now want to present as well, but I'm going to ask you to stick to three to five minutes so we can actually move through them. Um, cl clearly, Antonio was um, representing five different Broadway blitzes, so that was okay. Hey, um, Claudia, are you with us? Yes, I am here. Thank you. Just a second to share my screen. Of course. Uh, please let me know if you can see my screen now. Yes, we see it, but we see all the different, um, how do you say it, Pantayas? It's not big yet. Yeah. You're not in presenting mode yet. So we might be seeing your first screen and you have to select. Now it's better. We still see it small. Yeah, I think now it's yeah. Okay, okay. thank you, thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, well, um, hi everybody. It's very great to to meet you all here, uh, hearing them, a great experiences about this um, uh, bio blitz. And I'm going to share. Um, I just prepared three slices. I was <laughs> sorry about that. No, um, no. Yeah, uh, yes. Um, BioBlitz, um, we walk around in three rivers here in Western Mexico. Uh, it's our second participation here. Last year it was, um, uh, I was joining uh, Enriquez. And this year, um, from the experience from, from last year, who we want to expand to three rivers. They are very um, important for, for this city. It is uh, quite a small, medium city, uh, 50,000 uh, habitants around here. But these uh, rivers are very important because um, it is a, a source of water for uh, a lot of people in the city. So we walk around, um, uh, three rivers, here is the, the name, sorry, I have a, uh, it is uh, El Cangrejo, Cuajinque, Huacapan, uh, uh, all of them the same municipality. So it was um, in, not so complicated for us to move around these three rivers. So what, that's why we decide to, uh, to walk along uh, during the three days. Of course, uh, this, uh, it was great because we have to opportuni the opportunity uh, that a lot of people um, or different people participate um, according uh, their space and, and possibilities to, uh, during, because, you know, uh, Friday was, I think, the most difficult day because people are working, but on weekend was, was the best. So, um, I want to move to, uh, to the next. Okay, with this slide, I, um, sorry, I don't have really um, numbers of uh, observation that I can, I can talk about, but um, the point that I want to highlight is um, using the, all the um, words that people at the end of the event used to describe what the, the experience during these uh, three days, I tried to do a, a word um, a cloud uh, with those, these words. And it is uh, it's very interesting how, how the people um, have their own emotions uh, walking along 
the rivers that are very close by the city, but not all the people had the opportunity to really uh, know them. Um, most of the participants are um, enjoying uh, the, their observations, but now it was opportunity to also to look at the plants, trees, herbs, and also insects, aquatic insects. So I think we have a, a very, um, um, this points to that I want to, to remark that um, we have with this event the opportunity to really do um, citizen science on the ground. And uh, this year we have uh, 55 participants from different age, from 10 uh, to 70 years old. So it, we have different, uh, different uh, points of, 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 of view as well. And, and one important thing is the alliances that we, we are very lucky having here um, be part of the academy also uh, give us the opportunity to invite colleagues to, to join and support and all these uh, kind of observation. And at the same time, uh, strengthening the knowledge uh, of the biodiversity of the rivers here because we also involve uh, students. So um, with my students, for example, we are still uh, analyzing the information. I try to get to them to the end to do um, um, uh, to do a, a kind of um, essay about the East experience to go deep and really try to um, to get all the all the um, how you call it. Um, um, try to um, all, document all these experiences to, to the end, analyze them, and so we are working on, on that. So, um, and also uh, for this event, it was very important to, to have the local um, key actors involved. We invite to the local, um, um, how you say, uh, people who are uh, uh, they are important in the community because they are the connection between the locality and the municipality. So we invite them and they uh, join the, the, this event. So it was very important also to, to involve people and they are key actors in the communities. And um, also we have the opportunity to, to make a kind of um, connecting, uh, connecting uh, all this information in the region. Um, uh, through the radio and channels here and we were invited to to give a kind of um, interview so I take the opportunity to invite also the people who are who were participating as um, specialists so it was very very interesting all this and um, here we have a uh, before the before the biobliss activity we we joined this uh, radio at the university and uh, here are the people who were also supporting the, the um, observations on the field. So it, it was great to have these all um, partners and the motivation that they have to, to continue with this kind of activities really, I think is a really great achievement for all of us. Really happy to, to join this kind of events and we will keep continue to make diffusion of this and, and, and to continue with this kind of activities. Um, and, and of course, we are ready for BioBlitz 23. Thank you. Great. Super cool, Claudia. Thanks for sharing this and sharing the diversity of things that you've done around the Bioblitz. Um, ah, I see Anya now connected as well, and I'm sure she's super proud to see yeah. all of that has been happening over in our home country, even though she was in the Netherlands herself. Um, I really love the word cloud as well. That shows just a lot of the emotions, so that's great. Um, Almer, Andy, are you there with us? Uh, hi, I'm hi. here. Can you hear me? Yes. Do you want me to share the photos or do you are you able to do it yourself? Uh, can you please share the photo? My signal is not so good, so I'm not gonna turn on my video. I'm speaking on my phone, sorry about that. No, that's all good. There we go, one second. 
There we go. Oh, thank you. So yeah, so this is the third year that we joined the Biobus. The first year we do in Santa Fe River and the second time we did in Thailand River. But because this year I'm in Florida, so I and Andy, the one who showed the poster, he is working at the Crystal River Preserve State Park. So we together organize it with our friend and volunteer of the park. And just some of us walk and some of us is on the board or some of us kayak up to like whatever where convenience in a small group. So yeah, you can just go to the next picture. Yeah, so just like a kind of brief summary to let you guys see what we have seen here. And there are many vulnerable um, species that we found and also some endangered species and the plant. I just select some since you want like only a few pictures. I just combine them together. Yeah, it's nice. We, we saw dolphin and like like different types of snake and all the birds, even osprey and pilkin and other flower plants and yeah you can go to the next one yeah and the, the one that is like for like, sort the of highlight we think it's, it's nice that we see manatee usually is more in the winter in like december but so this time we just saw it very quickly and then that is the, the one we've seen so far but unfortunately, I think it's because the endangered species, so it will not show in our bioblitz because it's obscure and, and it show out of the boundary when, when it becomes obscure. But yeah, just uh, for an idea of our bioblitz this year, that's all. Uh, it was really nice to see all the other people activity together. Thank you. Amazing. Um, super cool. Hey, this manatee, the, the photo that you made, is that indeed good enough to get an observation on iNaturalism. I'm quite curious about this. Yeah, like um, for this one, and a good good point. But like, I mean, we see very, very clear one, but the, that is, the picture is very quick that we got <laughs> very quickly, so. Mm -hmm. Always a challenge though, getting the good photo and, but as long as you know that what it was. Cool, thanks a lot for sharing this. Mm -hmm. Looks like a great yeah. day. Thanks. Anna, you wanted to share a bit as well. Please go ahead. Yeah, I think I'm ready now. You see my screen, right? Yeah, I see myself. Well, <laughs> okay. Just want to show you quickly. Um, this is Mexico and uh, the river Nazas runs here. It's a river that does not reach the sea. So it's like an internal river and we have a dam. So it's not like a free flowing river, but we have uh, places which uh, are under conservation status. You can see here like a, a, a good uh, place in the river. Um, the Montezuma cypress are our main trees over there. Uh, we have also some areas that are more uh, polluted and we are working to see what we can do over there. Uh, I would like to mention the, the highlights that we had. Um, we saw this bird, it's a Northern birdless tyrannulet and we have records and I think the last time that was seen here was about 30 years ago and so it was a nice surprise for us to to see this bird again in the in the river but we also had some uh, well uh, insect observations we don't know we are not sure what was going on here but <laughs> they were like in a meeting and uh, on the on the observations that we were surprised we had uh, previews on the river but like uh, a sad a sad finding and one was the the starling the European starling uh, we have we don't have records before I'm just showing the picture so you can see some of the other birds that um, this is a black eagle. Um, 
so oh, well i was saying that we had the the starling that we we are not i mean it's not from here it's an invasive species we saw one organism but we we will be monitoring to see we see more of them and also some snails i'm looking for the picture yeah here these are apple snails, but they are not supposed to be on the river. And I think two years ago, we, we saw some of the eggs of the snail, but not the snails. But this time we had three different people observing the snails. So we are kind of concerned about this, but we will be monitoring. Um, our group goes to the river um, pretty often. So we'll be keeping an eye on there and see if we can contact somebody so we can do something if needed. That will be all. Thank you. Cool. Thanks, Anna. And cool to hear that actually the Bible helped to become aware of some endangered or not endangered species, but species that yeah. are, you know, like the other way around. So that's a cool result. And this photo of this insect meeting, that's really cool. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sweet. Hey, we have three more people that would like to share something. First of all, Fola from Nigeria. Are you with us? I see a lot Hello, of Can you hear me? Yeah, we Hi. hear you. Try to do that a bit quick. I see you have seven slides, but go ahead. Okay. Good afternoon from Nigeria and good evening wherever we are. Um, I'm sharing from Nigeria. This is a uh, learning home river bubbles. Uh, quickly, I just want to share with us um, our experience here in Nigeria. And during the bubbles, we were able to organize it on Saturday. It's just a day bubbles. And you will see from my presentation what we're able to observe. Can you see my slide, please? Yes. Okay, so the bubbles comprise of observation of plants, birds, insects, and some animal along the river body. It was the last year river that we went to this year also at the University of Ilonin here in Nigeria. But the only issue we have this year is that the university is on strike. So we couldn't have many students, most of the students are at home. So the few of us that are able to find ourselves were able to go there and we're able to explore the other side of the river, not the one, not the the, the, river, the the side we went to last year was where we had the boat and we're able to go on boat and all that. So we moved to the other side of the river this year. And so amazingly, we're able to get kids that join us this year. And these kids are so amazing and they are so curious to learn about different plants, different animals, different flowers, Around the level, around the water body, and it's so amazing for me because these kids are able to see life what they what they can only find on TV and on, on textbooks. So they learn a lot about things. So you can see a number of the a time they ask questions. They they were able to ask us what is this and what is that. So we're able to put the uh, little kids. Um, we were able to let them know about ecosystem interaction. They were able to learn about pollination, about birds. They had binoculars to look at birds. They learned about different insects, aquatic organisms, even snails and, and uh, different parts of plants, leaves, and all that. So it's so amazing that we're able to at least impact this new generation of uh, uh, kids that are able to learn things. So these are some of the organisms and um, observation that we're able to make. We were able to see a number of insects, uh, flowers, uh, snails, live valve, and even bird nests. This is so amazing for the kids to see the bird nests for the first time. And they were able to, they were asking questions, where is the kitchen, where is the sitting room, how is the bed, where is the uh, bed for the birds, where do they sit, and all that. But, we're able to tell them this is the structure of the bird nest and this is how the birds stay in a single enclosure, not different in both sitting room, kitchen, and all that. So they've been able to learn something new about bird nest. And this is all of all that we're able to partake in the home river bubbles, and it's so amazing. And this year we were able to make about 140 observations and for 45 species, and we say those are the ones that we're able to upload before that, the deadline. 
So this is me and my kids and my wife that were able to even go out and have a fun on that day and refresh ourselves. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you, Paula. This is cool to see. I was already wondering what happened because, but now I understand that there was a strike, but cool to see how you solved this and and the smile on your face shows how much energy you got from the day. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Sharing that and showing this is amazing. Um, would like to move then from Nigeria to Kenya to Patrick. Maybe for that, if you can stop sharing your screen, then um, Patrick can start doing so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. My colleague uh, Sharon is sharing her screen shortly, uh, but as we wait for her to share that, uh, we had a beverage event uh, last week on Wednesday. Uh, and are you now able to see her screen? Yes. And presenting now, so we see it. Yeah, I can see it's on present mode, but just like uh, Rika was saying, we had an event last week. If you click there on present, where you uh, let me try to present from my end, and then you have to click on present another time. Yeah. Oh, that was almost it, I think. Okay. Yeah, that was common. But uh, what I can also do, I can share an image from my computer. It looked okay, though. I think we could see a lot. So maybe Sharon, you can. Yeah, Sharon, you can just go ahead and share it again. Yeah, so yeah, we had an event last week where we had uh, 13 children. And uh, some of them came with their parents, and this event was taking place at a local museum, which also has a, a tiny river. Since where we're based, uh, we're based in uh, Kitanda, Kenya, which is uh, a highland area where most of the rivers, uh, or rather the streams, begin, so that they can be able to form a river. And in this particular event, uh, what we were observing, uh, we were observing the the plants, the insects around the, the museum, that is the river. And like you can see in one of the images here, we have an image of, uh, of a fan. I think uh, Sharon in the next uh, slide, but that's fine. And uh, apart from that, we were also keen to use or rather understand what else can the children be able to see apart from uh, what is visible to their eyes. And, uh, and, and to do this, we used tiny microscopes, the polescopes, to observe uh, tiny microorganisms such as insects. And, uh, and children were able to find joy in this. And one unique thing about uh, these particular birds is also that the children were walking on a trail, but we also had a special kind of group. There were children who had uh, disabilities. Some of them uh, were in wheelchairs, but since the trail could not accommodate them when they were young children, uh, their parents and some of our members uh, were able to carry them on their shoulders so that they can have uh, the same experience of uh, exploring and uh, observing things using their eyes and, uh, and using the microscope because later on they took pictures some of which are uploaded on the on our project on my naturalist and uh, and those are things that uh, parents and the children who participated in this particular activity uh, found uh, found joy in and since this was our first uh, biobridge event uh, we are looking forward to having uh, many more because of the feedback we got from the children and the feedback we got from the parents when they were walking around the, the museum uh, while exploring or taking uh, images. And I, I wish I could be able to share more pictures, but since uh, the presentation, I can see lots of the pictures. I can share them on the chats just for you to see how, how we were able to do this and what the children were able to observe 
and also what more we expect in terms of the species they were able to observe. But the main things they were able to observe in terms of uh, the rivers, there were lots of ferns, and then there were highlights that were revolving around uh, what it means to have polluted rivers and what it means to have rivers which are not polluted. Because like I said in the beginning, uh, the, this particular museum river, we have a river that originates from the museum and a river that is coming higher part of uh, Kitale town. And the, the river that comes from a higher part of Kitale town was a bit uh, polluted because of the upstream. But the river that came from this particular museum, uh, the water was crystal clear because the river or rather the stream was beginning from where the museum is. And they could see uh, clear distinctions between these two rivers, even though they were joining together at some point, but they could see how more or rather how rivers should be like in terms of uh, how they are protected and how dirty rivers which are polluted uh, are looking like. So it was possible for them to see those clear uh, differences and uh, which we hope will, uh, will make them more proactive in terms of protecting anything that is around them. And uh, yeah, that's it. So after this, I'll share some images on the chat that you can also have a look at in terms of what they were able to observe using the full scopes and, um, and also their eyes. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Patrick, and also Sharon for getting involved and cool to hear that this first event was actually successful and motivates you to join again and you got so much good feedback. Um, looking forward to the other photos that you're going to be sharing with us soon. Thanks a lot for this presentation. Um, our number grew to two more people still. Jochen. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Yeah, I don't hear uh, yeah. So that's the was our first time that we participated at the Home River BioBlitz. Um, I use I've been using iNaturalist for over three years now, and uh, so I was familiar with the platform and uh, how to observe and share um, photos and um, identify species. And um, what we did actually. Uh, I'm a school teacher as well. So um, we got over 80 students um, that we brought out to the river in Southern Germany. And we created a group account on iNaturalist, means everybody's using the same login. And they could simultaneously then observe and upload the pictures, which I think was a big advantage because we got a lot of uh, observations, about 850, I think, and um, yeah, a, a good number of species as well. And um, <clears throat> I also have um, I contacted people um, from the iNaturalist community if they want to join this weekend and um, you know focus more on these observations at the river. And a couple of them responded. I had about ten or fifteen or something, and they they committed to observing uh, just uh, along the river. Which, which was nice and, you know, increased our observations and the species numbers. And um, yeah, I think it was, was a great success. Uh, the students were involved. They, they were there between two hours and three hours about that time. And um, they, um, I think they learned a lot and they, they saw a species, of course, they never, they've never saw it seen before. And um, now we have data we can work with. We can use these observations to um, integrate in 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 the you know in the class in the biology lessons from ninth grade to twelfth uh, yeah twelfth grade actually that was the age of the students and uh, yeah I also have a couple of pictures. Let's see if I can share this. See how that how that works. Let's see, I don't know. Hmm. Desktop one. Maybe. Okay. Hmm. No, you, you can't see anything, right? 
No, not yet. Are you using that green share screen? Yeah. I guess uh, <laughs> I figured you were trying. Oh, let's see. Let me try this. Uh, oh, it doesn't let me do it. But you can look it up. Yeah, you can look up the species uh, on our uh, iNaturalist page. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was fun. It was great. And uh, yeah, thank you for, for doing that. And I'm sure we're going to join again next year. Thanks a lot, Johan. Thank you for joining. It actually makes me think we might want to do a little of a session with all the school teachers that are bringing their classes because it seems quite a lot, even with some classes joining in today. So that uh, that would be a cool way to connect next year, maybe a bit more the education directed group. I think we have one more that also joins this group, namely Ake with his whole youth team of the Chi River. I'm not sure who of you is going to present. Maybe it has to be the youth team if Ak is not All right, it's gonna be me. All right, okay, one moment. Um and share the content here. So um I would like to point out that um this is my first time knowing about the BioBlitz, and this is our first time um creating this um this event, and it is I'm really, pre I'm pretty sure that this is a really big successful for the community that we gather a lot of um, students, not only from from um, both um, well made majorly in, in biology, and then um, students from the club at the Mahasarakham University here in Mahasarakham province in Thailand. So, um, without further ado, let's to let's go to the picture here. Um, Let's see, do you hear, do you see my screen? Yes. I think it's going up, right? Yeah, um, so um, we, we did a section on Chi River in Mahasarakham in, in Thailand. And actually, you know, this is the, the photo of our river right now, Chi River. And the stage is very high now. so. Pretty much, this is in act, and it, this is in an active um, emergency flooding zone. So when when we did was um, fun and dry, but right now it's it's um, completely inaccessible to go to go into that place anymore. But well, after a month or so, I think we we would be able to walk in that place again. So yeah, let's wait some time. So here, this is what. This is the place that I'm talking about. The river is like curving right here. And when you look at um, on the right side, this part is the Oxbow Lake. At first we plan to go inside the, 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 in the part of the Oxbow, but um, the river has already entered in and it is completely flooded under the water. So basically what we did was um, walking along this river and um, yeah, have a look at some species that we found. And some part we have to um, take the boat out and just roll and capture some pictures of what, what we saw, right? So pretty much this is the riverine forest um, along the river that we look at. Um, pretty impressive, like big trees and some small stuff, some cool stuff as well. So yeah, this is a uh, students from the, from the youth club of the, um, the birthing and nature um, club at Mahasarakham University helping out along with biology students um, using, well, most of them, like, including me, is the first time um, user of iNaturalist and we, we found it very fun to use and education, educational. Right, so this is our group, like about 20 people helping out for um, looking at the um, species, trying to identify, trying to find them in the um, in the nature and identify it. Right, we have the section that we use microscope to look at some small stuff, cool stuff as well. And we walk around and we also um, look at the nice, cool, like um, the paddy field along the river as well. It, it is just right along the river. 
So we had a part where we explored by boat to the part that um, the, the, um, the university um, buildings that are flooded right now. And it is fun because we have no idea where the peaks, but where the peaks came from. Like they just came right, run at our boat. Like what happened? <laughs> we had no idea that the peaks are there. And then, yeah, we, it looks like they are gonna drown us, us like flip the boat. And yeah, we had hijacking your boat like that, but no, that, that, that wasn't happen. Yeah, but to, to, to see at the magnitude, this is the, like the fence of, <laughs> of the building. So yeah, it's fun right now. We should look at that. Um, we also did some nice stuff. We, we used some light traps out and tried to see some um, insects and some, um, some animals that coming around, look in the, um, in the forest and in the nighttime is pretty impressive. We saw a lot of amphibians, frogs and toads and in just like a small habitat, small water from the tire that goes into the river. So in that just small, small pond, like small ponds, we saw a lot of things, yeah. And yeah, we did see a lot of um, stuff. We did see a lot of animals, fish, invertebrates, crabs, um, flowers, flowering plants, aquatic plants, small plants. And look at this, they are looking at us like, why, what are you doing? <laughs> like you see iNationalist, seems like they, they try to use that too, right? This dragonfly looks nice. And we also find this cool stuff. This is um, like the flatworm, the, the like hammerhead flatworm. It's cool, right? Well, it's in tropical Thailand. So what do you, uh, do, what do you expect? We also look at some small stuff, like some lichens and this is fungi. Right? I'm not quite sure what it's called, what is like, we call it orange fungi. And we saw some um, mushrooms and also lichens too. So that's pretty much it for what we have in Thailand. Right? Thanks. Wow. <laughs> This makes me realize that I would have loved to just be everywhere in the world on that same day. Um, this looked like a really fun bio blitz and impressive that you still decided to just go out even though it was really flooding. Um, happy you're all safe though. Super cool presentation. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> cool. Hey, we're running a bit over time. On it was fun. There's still some people around and we have one more person that would like to quickly share their experience and I since it's about sharing experience, I would like to definitely give this space. Um, Alexa, are you with us? Uh, yes, I am. I am sorry, I don't connect the, the internet, it's pretty bad. Don't worry. I am participating in, in, in Naturalist because I please, uh, I, just, I would you like the, uh, the link. Um, present uh, the <laughs> and the ing yes because this is the first time aha uh -huh. because it's the first time on the on the bio blitz and the quebrada ortega is the uh, the river and the around the uh, the community and recuperate and the biodiversity about uh, again on the the 15 years and the, uh, you need on the um, other uh, institutions and the uh, Quito so and the universe in the America University and sensible uh, environment sensible with the children and use and the um, uh, lupus and the um, uh, environment environment arts with the with the children with the um, neighborhoods and they play games and the um, and the first time and I, I have a, a, a little problems and the um, recuperate this breed because and the all, all pollution and contamination uh, are near the and the station buses okay it's uh, uh, this first experience is because the uh, it's very nice for children and the uh, recuperate and the 
Mm, and then in the frog, the, uh, the highlands, and the gastroteca riobambae, because it's the, a frog marsupial uh, in, in the Ecuador. In this, in this place, and um, introduce this, this frog. Okay. Alex, do you want me to try and see if this video works? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. <laughs> This is a uh, new job because on the song with the uh, Mama Uma Travel and Guagua Monte, I see enterprise with uh, trekking and moms and child, uh, um, the babies and six months and uh, 12, 13 years uh, and trekking on the highlands and the coast in the Ecuador. And the principal objective is uh, the goal. It's uh, sensible by the children, but the protected uh, uh, nature environment. This is the first time, and the bioblitz and is interesting. Uh, continue uh, the participate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Very happy to hear you had a good first experience as well. And looking forward to have you uh, again next year. Thank you. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, thank you. Cool. Hey, that was um, a quick tour around the world. Amazing experience all of you have had. Um, as I said before, I wish I could just join all of them, but I guess that's not the way we organize this event, right? Because it's all in the same weekend, so that would be quite <laughs> impossible. Um, I think we're quite... Um, it's cool that, that still some of you are here. I wanted to just use a few more minutes to say a bit about um, what we would still like to share. Um, let me get back to my presentation so I know actually what I'm doing. Oops, 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 oops. My own one. Hey. Difficult. Um, right, first of all, um, just a quick note to everyone that supported this, like it's organized by the River Collective with quite cool team members, Carlos, Jens, Elena, Jürgen, and Enya, um, and me, I think that's, uh, oh, and Roxanne who helped, um, some people writing the press release. We're supported by NRS and the National Geographic Society, which is a huge help. Um, and as you realize, um, it wouldn't be possible without a naturalist. And it's cool to see that, for instance, um, uh, Jochen, that you indeed um, contact the people that are already using a naturalist and use, really use that community in your own spaces. Um, before getting there, hey, we, we have this video that we're making at the moment still. Um, so for whomever still wants to upload some of their material onto this um, shared Google Drive folder, I'm going to share the link with you. That would be great because um, I think we're going to have it ready only in November. We're a bit slower this year it's simply because of capacity. Um, so that shared linker is here. And I'm going to share one more link with you. And that's a bit of like a padlet, maybe you know it, but it's a way um, for you to add some feedback to this last year's um, homework for BioBlitz. Also some ideas. So if you have um, some feedback on how we organized it, um, some feedback on um, how others could get more um, involved in it, please just add any, any thoughts you have on that padlet and I'm gonna as we speak um add one more section which is tips and tricks um with the idea like if you have a specific I saw for instance in this video in this last video like bring a microscope that is something that is I think super cool way to have passengers that come by um 
attracted to the Bible, and then you can start explaining um, ways to get your school class involved, ways to, you know, all those kind of tips and tricks, feel free to add them there. You can add your own cards in it and um, happy to hear some feedback from all of you. Um, unless somebody has questions or remarks at this moment, even fur. I want to say a huge thank you to all of you who presented today, to all of you that went out into the field on that day, that motivated their local communities to go out. Um, again, I feel overwhelmed. I wish I had more time to really dive into everything. Um, next year, we definitely will do another Home River BioBlitz. Seems like all of you are motivated to join again. Um, so let's be in touch until that time and um, enjoy. Um, using all the memories, looking back to it the coming weeks, and um, we'll get to you with the video soon. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you to you all for all the motivation. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you so much from Nigeria.